What is up, everybody? Logan here again today with Halcyon Trader again. And we haven't had Halcyon on in a minute. Uh, we've just been doing a lot of trades where I just kind of shoot him messages and he'll message me what he's trading. And then I'll post some stuff to the Discord for us to all kind of trade together. But we, Justin and I used to be big swing traders last year. And swing trading really isn't working too well this year. A um, lot of open gaps that don't get filled immediately very different than it's been for the last few years. So we've just been day trading a lot. So uh, I'm excited to see what you see in the markets and we're going to go over all the charts, but I really appreciate you coming back on for another episode. And it's been like 18 months <laughs> that since you've been making videos with me. So this is pretty slick. Yeah, man. No problem. You owe me 18 million shroot bucks now for coming back on as my finder's fee. Can I pay in Dogecoin? You can. That's that's all I accept nowadays. Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah, man. So let's dig in. I think um, I think this is a probably a very timely. Actually, probably been timely to do this maybe five months ago, <laughs> as the market has very much changed its characteristics. Yeah. And I I know this in terms of uh, having a lot of other conversations with traders and investors who have really become um, acclimated to the 2020, 2021 environment, and then are really struggling in this 2022 market. Uh, not surprising because, uh, you know, everybody looks awesome. You can have idiots look like superstars when the market only goes straight up. And now you're getting a dose of uh, wherever you have holes in your trading, whether it's your plan or your setups or your scans or whatever you do to get to point A and point B, you're getting holes, you know, poked in your armor now. And, um, you know, what was, do what was working in 2020 and 2021 is not working right now for the vast majority of the retail traders that got, you know, started their, got their kick started during that time. So love to just kind of talk through what we've been seeing, um, kind of what we've been doing during this period of time and uh, just some of the reminders of, you know, th this has definitely been a great reminder of becoming a profitable trader is damn hard. There just is no other way around it. And anybody or anyone who's selling you something that telling you it's easy is absolutely lying to you or selling you a load of bullshit. There's just no other way around that. Becoming a really good trader, I'll say it one more time, is really, really hard. Uh, it's the reason why most people do not succeed in this. It's the reason why most people uh, who were awesome in 2021 are doing terrible in 2022. Because um, guess what? This is the market constantly is changing its personality and what's working, what's not working. Uh, and it's our job to forever be hunting on what is going to be coming up and thinking ahead about what's going on and making sure we continue to position ourselves uh, and taking setups that are appropriate to the environment that we're in. So if you don't do that, uh, it will eventually catch up to you and you will get exposed and poof, there goes your account, right? So um, so let's talk through a few things. And this is kind of, I think, always, is, as I've been reminded by some of the mentors and folks that I've worked with over the time is... Um, you have really got to pay attention daily to what is the context of the market you are trading in. And if you do not have a good habit that you've created to be able to understand what is the current context, you will eventually, it will catch you at some point. It doesn't, it may not be this week, may not be the, this quarter, might not be till six months down the road, but eventually you will get caught with not understanding the context and you'll be putting on trades that make no sense for the context of the market we're in, uh, investing in. Some people call that like situational awareness. Some people call that, you know, having a feel for the market. Uh, but ultimately it's the context by what's just going on uh, is the, you know, trigger for how to trade this market. So um, we're looking at my charts right now. This is the SPX. We've got daily on the right, hourly, on the left and this little sliver over here, which for all those perfectionists are going to drive you nuts. But this is a, this is a shorter time frame that I use when I'm just scanning um, zoomed in. So it's 15 minute. But either way, what we want to look at right now is just get a sense for 
you know, what does this year look like? So here's the six months, right? Here's the beginning of the year. And we've had very obviously a down trending market, right? Um, I, my personal opinion is that we really topped out really in November. Um, a lot of the internal metrics topped out in November. Price didn't really top out until the very beginning of the year, obviously. So now here we are trading in a market and we have officially via the talking heads on the whatever financial media you view uh, are showing us that we are in a, uh, or telling us we are in a bear market. Oh my God. Um, and so here's the six months of this current year, right? And it's been uh, challenging for sure. Like no doubt, I've, I've definitely personally been challenged this, per this past year. And I've had to adapt and change what I've been doing and get out of the, you know, everything just keeps going up kind of thought process, which is definitely what that market lured us into, especially the second half of 2021. I mean, I know a lot of folks that I knew that traded uh, pretty intensely were, you know, you viewed as just, it's just going to forever keep going up. And that, that FOMO was big time, uh, I think, taking over the logic for a lot of people uh, with how they were trading. So so here we are now, six months down the road. I don't care if you're looking at SPX or NDX, so the S&P 500 or the NASDAQ, Dow Jones, New York Stock Exchange, the NICE, um, small caps. They all look for the most part pretty similar. Um, you know, whether you're looking at growth or value, value and growth. Value has been kind of the place, you know, for the year a little bit more so than growth. But either way, everything has really gotten beat up. And, you know, we assess and get look at the context or the situation or the feeling of the market. This is what I have taken away for this year so far. And then here is just some general thoughts uh, when looking historically uh, at what this is doing. Uh, so you can get prepared for when to look to see this thing gets out of this correction. Um, it's been my, when I've looked back and said, okay, you know, prior bear markets, I mean, whether you're looking at the, 2008-09 bear market, the 2002, you know, 2001, 2, uh, bear market. Uh, look at any of the major corrections we've had over the last 15, 20 years. There's only been a couple of times, maybe once or twice during all of those corrections that we that our corrections end uh, sometime like around December. Otherwise, most of the time, those corrections are finishing up either September, October timeframe, or more likely the March, April timeframe, right? So when I'm looking at when we're in a bear market, uh, it is a good possibility that this current bear market that we're in is going to stay in a corrective stance until either A, September, October of this year, right? So another couple months, or B, which is more likely what I'm pegging is, is we're looking at more like the March, April timeframe of 2023, um, maybe, I mean, certainly we get some relief rallies here and there. Certainly we, uh, you know, we'll get some counter trend 10 and 20% rallies, which is not uncommon in bear markets. So if you've never traded them. Uh, I would highly, in fact, if you want to be able to make it at all for any long period of time doing this, you have to study regularly what past markets have done. And it would be a very wise choice to go back and look at the 08, 09, corrections in the market and look at the behaviors of what happened there. Look at the counter trend rallies that took place. This will give you confidence as you are trading through this to understand when these rallies take place. And then when they, um, you know, when to expect them to fail. Uh, same thing in 01, 02, 03. Now, yeah, there's definitely differences with what was going on in the market. There's technologies that were available now that were not available then that changed things a little bit. You know, the speed of which trading, the volume of trading is a lot different a lot more instruments to use than there were then. But at the end of the day, it's human psychology that moves a lot of this market around. And humans are roughly have done the same thing with the markets since the, you know, advent of making the modern markets is we run around in, you know, fear of missing out, whether that's up or down. Uh, we tend to do that pretty well and pretty consistently. So um, some of the takeaways that I've got here is that for the most part, the 50 day moving average on most of the major indexes is going to be your barometer for which, direct, which direction the market is trading. Um, you know, we are currently below that, which for me is this light blue line, right? And this is just a simple moving average. I don't even think this is exponential, to be honest. I think it's just a simple version of it. Um, but we are currently trading below that. And so to me, that is just telling us the river continues to flow against us. And 
what should be expected is that whenever we get back above that, it is going to get pulled back to it immediately. Uh, and you know, that is going to be what we deal with until we get out of this current environment that we're in. Um, you know, and again, that's either, you know, maybe a, we'll say a 40% chance it's September, October, and probably more likely again, I would take maybe more like an 80% chance it's, you know, March, April of next year. Um, which means that there's going to be, again, lots of opportunities for more volatility, lots of opportunities for more counter trend rallies. Um, but you know, at the end of the day, you know, it's our job as traders is to make sure we have a really, really strong pulse on what's going on in the market. Another thing to be aware of is as you look at the movements in the S&P in particular, and this would, I would argue this is the same for most stocks as well, is that they're tending to move in about anywhere from three upwards to five, maybe six day bursts on the upside and the same thing on the downside and the market's closed. I was four points off. You're right. 3850-ish. We hit 3850 for a little while there, but yeah. yeah. Um, anyway, the you know, we're looking at this, and as we zoom in, you know, I think most of our rallies have been one, two, three, four, five, and then we drop down. One, two, three, four, five, drop down. Uh, on the downside, one, two, three, four, five, and you kind of skip that little, you know, the the inverse takes place. Um, and that's kind of for me, that's been holding true with the exception of this time period in March where we had a little more, I mean, this was a pretty solid rally that took place there. I want to say that was 10% or at least pretty dang close to that. Yeah, I think it was 10%. And I, a lot of that too was off the Ukraine-Russia information where we yep. get a lot of news overnight where it was like, hey oh, I guess it's looking better. <laughs> yeah, 10.33%, right? And whatever gets attributed to this, the reality is um, you need to study this and be very aware of what to look for, right? So like, you know, recently, last week, right? We had a good, fairly decent week last week. One, two, three, four, five, we're up five days up in a row. And what you tend to hear is nothing during this period of time. And then all of a sudden everybody wants to start getting in on Friday. Oh, you know, this looks really good. I, I feel good because now, you know, it's been up four days in a row. And also because this, you know, whoever this, mythical person is, which I'm guessing is a lot of people, um, they're not paying attention to you. every time roughly it's been four to five days up. We get, we get down days shortly after that, you know, they're, I'm going to, they start thinking about, they're going to, you know, but, you know, put in 50% of their account into something and, you know, and then expect Monday morning's going to rock it up and well, shock it's down today. And like, that was to me that, you know, on Friday, I sold all of my open positions uh, somewhere in the mid morning on Friday, seeing that we're up roughly four or five days in a row. Some of the positions were up 10% in a couple of days. And it's like, this is just, this is prime time in bear markets that you get a lot of that profit taken away on Monday. It's just classic what it does. Um, and sure enough, that's what we're happening. Um, you know, do we see follow through tomorrow? I'd say 50, 50 chance at this point, just because our down day today wasn't enough of a down day to, really scare anybody, but also this week is going to be pretty, uh, lots of news coming through, first rounds of earnings coming through, airlines earnings are going to come through. So it'll be interesting to see kind of what, what is being shown with that. I personally have no idea how those earnings are going to be interpreted. My, my guess is that they're not going to look as amazing as, um, you know, with inflation going crazy and all that, it may probably not going to look as amazing, but all it's going to take is one company, one decent sized company's earnings to look pretty good. And that might start to kick off, you know, for another couple of day rally, who knows, but either way, um, you know, this is something to pay attention to and keep watching this and keep studying these over and over and over again, you know, look at, you know, get yourself super familiar with what, what is this market doing? How is it acting so that you can be prepared to make the proper choices of what to do? Uh, you know, for me, in this case, when I'm looking at this daily chart, I'm also going back and then looking at the hourly just to get a little more sense of the nuances throughout the day. You know, what am I looking at here during the day during these exact same time frames? To see, you know, how did this how did this market react to this? What was it like during the morning? What was it like during the afternoon? Um, you know, it, was there any kind of indication I was looking for? You know, what, did I have any squeezes that showed up? during this time frame, And sure enough, in the hourly, we had a nice little squeeze show up and it went long as soon as we went over the 50, 50 hour moving average, which 
to me was uh, one of my favorite ones to use for when I'm getting long or getting short is are we above or below the 50 period moving average on the hourly chart? Um, I will say when you're in bear markets, I tend to shorten up my time horizon personally. And I stop trading off of weekly and daily and start looking more at the hourly as my means for setups because I'm not expecting things to last for three, four, five weeks in one direction. Uh, I expect them to have violent moves downs, you know, and then some retracement of the upside and then another violent move down and continuing that process until we finally get all of the fear shaken out on the downside is the time where we will eventually turn ourselves back around. Now, does that happen to correspond with the end of Russia, Ukraine? Does it happen to correspond with, you know, inflation finally relaxing and they don't have to raise up another 75 basis points? Probably, probably happens that way. Probably it's a lot of after the fact information that we see that in. Um, but I'd be willing to bet the psychology of what's going on at the time is going to be, you know, people are throwing in the towel at this point. They're sick and tired of watching the market just drip and drip and drip to the downside. The other thing too, and I think this is true of most bear markets when they finally end, is that you usually have them end with quite a bang uh, where it's like the market just said, it's like everyone just throws their hands up and says, F it, I'm done with this. You see some pretty ugly down days that take place, which helps flush everything out, get all the weak hands out of it. And then we can start the process of going back up. And the same thing when a new bull market starts, you're going to see that start with an explosive move. It's not going to be some piddly half percent up, one percent up day. It will be a very aggressive explosion of the market to the upside where all this kind of money on the sidelines and all the smart money starts piling back in because of, you know, whatever the reasons are, they decide it's the time to start doing that. And that's something else to be aware of too. So, you know, when we keep dealing with the emotions of fear or the emotions of greed coming in, you know, we got to always pay attention to, all right, in the context right now, in the situation that's right now, the feeling of what's going on right now, am I seeing those tell, you know, telltale signs of uh, money accumulating, exploding in? I will say so far for this, for the last six, seven months, we haven't even come close to seeing the internal numbers showing any of that kind of buying pressure, not even remotely close. So to me, that just means we continue to err on the side of down. We continue to err on the side of, you know, shorter time frames. look at maybe three upwards to five or six days of momentum one direction before it gets immediately reversed the other way. Uh, and until that mode is broken, that's how you got to keep trading it which does require you to adjust your strategy, right? I mean, it's, you can't do go, you know, balls out long on everything when you're in a down market, you're just going to get your head ripped off. There is no other way to say that's what will happen. And I'm sure quite a few people have had that happen to them, where this has been a very stressful, um, challenging period of time to trade in. It just, that is just what ends up happening. So that's my general thoughts on SPX. Same thing with NDX. I mean, if you look at it, that's potato, potato. They're going to look uh, pretty much the same. I mean, they, you almost can't even tell. They look almost identical to each other. Uh, I will say one thing of note is we are on the bottom of the channels. So mathematically, and, and those who aren't aware what all these little lines are, which good to know from a reference. Once you see them, though, um, I would suggest once you know roughly what area you're in is, is take them off so you can have a less cluttered looking chart, but they're good to be able to flash it, see what's on there and know roughly where you stand on the field position. But these are just mathematical levels that will tell us roughly, you know, how much further we can expect to go down, you know, down in this green zone is about as far as we go down before we bounce out. And up in the red zone is about as far as we can go up before we typically see some kind of correction on the downside. So in other words, you don't want to be a big seller when you're down in this range and you don't want to be a big buyer when you're up in here. Uh, of course, the emotions are the polar opposite at those ends of the spectrum, right? Everyone is super fear of missing out. So they're jumping in up here and everyone's super scared and getting out down here. All right. So you just got to be aware of that. Um, and again, one of the best ways to do that is to daily pay attention to uh, running your own analysis of what is the situation of the market right now? What is the feeling? What is the context? You got, you have to get in the habit of doing that every single day, or eventually it will catch up and you will do something dumb 
like get super long when you, you should be taking profits and closing out positions. Right. And then there, there you go. You lose a month or two worth of gains because you let the fear of missing out take over your logic. Um, and something else to be aware, I heard this recently and I thought this was a really, really valuable and very true statement is that we as humans are uh, feeling beings who also happen to have logic available to us. We are not logic beings who happen to use feelings on occasions. Uh, so in other words, when you, when you unpack that statement, our feelings tend to drive us most of the time. And we try to get a logic to jump in there and help us out on occasion. But most of the time, when you look at the decisions, a lot of us make, they make absolutely zero sense from a logic perspective. And it's generally all feelings that are driving it one way or another feelings or emotions one way or another. But when you start understanding that you start building some, especially in trading, because trading is so emotionally can be so emotionally taxing, I mean, especially if you're not prepared for what that, is because it's like a battle internally with yourself all the time. Um, but once you are aware that the emotions and the, and the feelings side of it want to run you around and make you do dumb things, you can take some steps to make sure you build a process and a system uh, that are going to help minimize that as best you can. And I would argue the best traders on the planet, they have figured that out. They have solved the emotions versus logic puzzle when it comes to trading. Um, and I know everybody has been there before and everybody is still there in some way, shape or form. I'm sure that's the same for you too, Logan is, you know, you try your best to keep the emotions out of it, but man, that's damn hard. It is, uh, you know, and, and it definitely is even more challenging if you really don't have a good system or a, a plan or a process or a setup for, you know, keeping you on the right track. If you just kind of trade off of, you know, the moment and what feels good to you. Um, I'm telling you that that is a recipe for disaster. And I'm sure you've already figured that out. Uh, whoever this person is on the other end listening to this. Um, so that's my general big kind of picture thoughts in the market. In, in other words, we're in a bear market. Duh, we're correcting still. And, you know, we really aren't going to be out of this thing uh, likely until fall or next early spring is my opinion on that. And I'm, I hope it's I hope that's not the case, but I don't think I've ever seen a bear market end in uh, uh, end in, a, in the middle of summer. So uh, they almost it's always fall or or, winter or early winter. Especially um, with more volume every summer too. Also, our meeting is less than a minute. I don't know. I see that because you don't have the actual real Zoom. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think one other thing, just from an option side of it, uh, again, I know we're talking more top level, uh, but doesn't really make a ton of sense to be zoomed super specific into setups or special scans unless you are able to fully understand what you're actually what environment you're trading in. So uh, I think so. We're kind of just hitting on this point, uh, and I personally believe this will like that thought process is going to serve you much better in the long term than it would be to just say, "Hey, here's a scan. Here's a setup. Here's a you know a structure of a." you know, broken wing or whatever, like that you, you're not understanding why the environment of when you put those on is, is just, I'm giving you a, you know, giving you a match as you walk around with a gasoline can, like, it's just, it's not going to be a good end outcome at some point. So, um, as we, maybe on the next video here, let's talk, we'll talk more about, um, trade setups within the correct environment and the correct, um, uh, scans that you use within, whatever the actual market's giving us based on the, our awareness of what's happening. So we can see how do you pair those together. Uh, but for this particular one, this particular video, we'll just talk more about the awareness side as we're kind of wrapping this up. So anyway, the final thoughts are on the option end of the market. If you haven't yet already figured this out in bear markets, uh, the runways are a lot bigger because of the violent moves that take place with the VIX and the market moving up and down so quickly within bear markets. Um, one of those being in particular is how your market reacts to the expected moves that are projected out there. And they are just that. They are a um, helpful expectation that is given. But at the same time, um, in bear markets, the expectations that are presented in terms of expected move are a lot of times blown out on one end or the other uh, usually more often to the downside. And uh, as you know, when you're trading options, 
getting blown out on the downside is a, that feels a lot worse than when you go on the upside on things. So, um, as we look at the VIX in particular, right, when we, when we pay attention to what's going on, keep in mind, this is part of your own awareness of what's happening right now with the context is we're in an environment where the VIX is up in the high twenties. Um, and it has been really preferentially trying to stay up into the twenties and thirties range for quite some time. Uh, and so, you know, now when we know that is the case, um, and throwing in some of our standard deviation numbers, you know, we know the zone where the market wants to start correcting again is anytime it gets down around the white line and got pretty dang close, uh, last week, uh, Friday. So not surprising that it's bump, it's bumping up again. It's up 6%, you know, today or uh, yeah, 6% today up 1.53 on the actual price, but just, you gotta keep, you just gotta pay attention to stuff every single day. You need to take a look at it, have a way that you look for 15 minutes or 10 minutes pre-market, but, you know, ideally do so quite a what, you know, eight thirty nine nine in the morning, look to see the quick situation of what's going on and make sure you are aware of what you are involved in. It'll help you. It'll save you, you know, from doing dumb things, or at least it'll help put the emotions in check for a moment. Um, you know, cause as this was free falling down, what's the market generally doing with this falling, they're generally trying to stay sideways or up, right. As a lot of the fear is being pulled out, you know, and again, the VIX is looking at the ratio of, put options and call options on the SPX. That's what it's derived from. Uh, we won't go into all the nuts and bolts of how it all works, but, you know, again, for your own study, right. Know all the ins and outs of what you're involved with. Uh, go look that up. Look, look at the details of how the VIX works and the different um, uh, areas to be concerned or be aware of, of what makes it move up and down. So in this case, again, expected moves, they tend to be again, uh, just that it's not a hard and fast rule that it will never go above or below those expected moves, uh, depending on which side you're talking about. Um, it's just a, here's an expectation of what we think is likely to happen. This isn't guaranteed to stay within this range and bear markets are notorious for going and blowing those out more often than not. Um, obviously the higher the VIX is, the higher that's more that to me, at least that's the more likely that's going to happen. Uh, especially when you have the turning points where you go from being way up, to falling back down or way down to, you know, jumping back up. So um, that's kind of my final thoughts, but I do think Logan, we should do another one here in short order, probably do another one later this week yeah. where we take um, the, the environment that we're looking at and pair that with, this is a, a trade that makes sense for this kind of environment um, so that people can start connecting what they're visually seeing what the context is giving them with how do I actually make money inside of this context? Um, because again, I guarantee there is a lot of retail traders, especially those who only started in 2020, 2021, who were trying to apply that exact same philosophy or setup or scan that was working really, really well in 2021 and have been finding themselves running into a, a brick wall and keep asking, why is this wall hard? You know, like, so you know, hopefully we can give them um, some additional tools and maybe give them a little different perspective uh, as to how they proceed going forward. Um, because again, trading is damn hard. It is not something that you can just do casually and be anywhere decent at it. I mean, if you want to master anything, you have to really uh, get intense. You've got to, you know, go full on head first into it. I mean, there just, there isn't a way to go, you know, half ass into it and feel like you're, and then think you're going to master what's going on in the markets. They just, they change too much. And you know, there's too much of a uh, multiple variables going at one time to, to be able to go do it that way. Same thing like with golf, man, we were just talking about that a second ago. Nobody masters golf by practice, you know, going out and playing once a week at their local club. Like you're not going to be any good. You're going to be meh at best, right? You'll be a plus 12 or whatever handicap uh, golfing. And the same thing will happen with trading. Like you want to just, you know, casually look at this here and there. Well then expect casual, you know, returns at best. Yep. I mean, that, that's my personal opinion on that. That's all I'll say about that. <laughs> I mean, you're right. I, if you're hundred percent right. I mean, it's just coming and it's consistency and patience. It's a, just doing the right thing over and over and over, like working out. Like you go to the gym once a week, don't expect to be ripped. But if you go four or five days a week, I bet you say yep. pretty good, you know? 
if you're doing everything the right way. So it's the same thing with the markets. Like you definitely take days off. It's like taking sick days. Everybody needs that. Like there's no setups like for how you're trading, right? Like sure. It, it comes down to you have to the share side of things, the options, whatever your whatever your specific edge is, if it isn't showing up that day and you don't feel like learning a new edge or, you know, maybe it's such a consistent one and you are very busy in the rest of your life. Yeah. I can understand like taking days off, but yeah, if you want to be crushing the market, you got to be doing your scans every day, looking for your opportunity, finding your edge, confirming your thesis with other people and other strategies so that, you know, like, okay, here's why I'm taking this trade. And I think that's like the biggest part. And then also like, I would say my biggest struggle mentally with the markets as of lately is definitely um, when to add to a position and when to take profit. That has been a hundred percent in this type of environment. You know, that the volatility is so high. I want to continue to add more, even though if it, even though it's probably not the smartest thing, but also today, like had an opportunity but mentally was like, I probably shouldn't add any more money just because I'm already in with what I'm properly sized with. And I know I can handle, of course, everything would have worked out, but I do think there's some truth to that too, of like, when you are adding to a position or taking profit, how much do you add or how much do you take, you know, profit from that? So, cause I deal with oh, yeah. all That's the a... expirations with options. <laughs> you gotta be really timely with it. Yeah, I would agree. That is a, the adding on to an already winning trade is a is a in my opinion one of the most difficult skills to um, beat into your own head when you're trading mm-hmm. is because it for most people they it's sort of like it's like the opposite of what you what feels intuitive to do uh, is is you want to take your winning trade not add to the winning trade uh, is and I would say again it seems so simple and fly and like in theory, but when you get down to in real life practice in real time, uh, it is very, very, very difficult for most traders, uh, to get in the habit of adding into a winning trade. Um, you know, it just, cause again, at the end of the day, once you learn how to manage your risk properly, then your sizing should be equivalently going up in during that process. Um, if you don't have obviously a good risk management, um, strategy, then, Say, you know, sizing big into this trade with poor risk management is you might as well just give your money away. You might as well start burning it, you know, in front of yourself because it's well, eventually what's will end up happening. But either way, I do think this is a good, maybe a new series that we start is kind of walking through how to do, get your awareness down of what's happening in the market. Um, if you're looking for a takeaway from this, take a week, take this next week, the rest of this week and every day before the market opens, go give yourself a, a write down what, what's currently going on within the market. What are the things you need to be aware of? What's happening? Is CPI coming out? Is Fed talking? You know, how many days up have we been? How many days down have we been? You know, where are the levels? What current, you know, stocks are, what are we actually moving? What's not moving? You know, like biotech started about two weeks ago. Uh, you know, what, where is the strength moving around and, and have, start beat that into your own head that you do that every day so that when you get into the live bullets firing at you, you know, you aren't sitting there going through that process of, oh, did I check to see what indexes are working and where, which ones are at the right levels right now and which ones are in no man's land and, you know, which ones give me an edge, which ones are giving me no edge. Like having all that swirling around your head without actually have taken, you know, 15 minutes to go check this stuff out, you're losing, you're, you know, it's just a waste of edge that you could potentially have to give yourself, you know, the next leg up. And again, that's, that is why most people don't, most people don't do that. Most people, you know, they pop on, try to run the same thing they heard from somebody else, you know, don't really have a full understanding why they do it or when they do it. And then it works for a little bit and then it doesn't work. And then they go off to the next strategy and try it again. And the next one, and then the next one, and then the next one. And they kind of just never ending, you know, cycle of trying new setups or strategies. But what they don't do is they rarely ever go through and really get a good feel for, in the current market, what is the situational awareness going? What is the feeling? What is the context? Whatever you want to call that. Uh, what is that as we as it stands this day before this market opens up? Mm-hmm. Many times it's the trade you don't take that is what is the right thing to do than what you are taking. So, but 
it's hard to do that, hard to differentiate in that stuff when you don't have any idea what actually is globally going on around you, right? I mean, just that is probably the death of most traders is they just, they aren't aware of what's happening around them and they do setups or scans that are not designed to thrive in that particular environment. And that is just how that works. So now, you know, take a week, do one every single day, every morning before the market and see if that helps anything for you. Yeah. You know? well, I appreciate you coming back on for this video. I think it's a great place to wrap it up. I know we've Yep. Been- agreed. Um, yeah, if you guys want to come join the discord trade with us, the link is below. If you guys can leave a like and a comment below, if you have any questions, on, um, any questions for me, any recommendations on what you guys want to hear, but I do like this series. It's like situational, like how to improve your situational awareness. Cause it's just coming from a pretty professional mindset. I would say, um, with how, you know, you and I attack the markets and, just doing it the proper way and especially dealing with, you know, expected moves getting tested and blown out and whatever, because this market's been a beast this year. It sure has. Say that again. Definitely not as easy as it used to be. (laughs) (laughs) Is that true? The easy money is gone at this point. Now everyone, the (laughs) real trading is now on. Yeah. That's the reality is, now there if you have skills you're going to make money in this if you don't have skills if you really have a bunch of holes in your own you know chinks in the armor you will get, you're going to get exposed now and and people have been getting exposed all year long it's been that's been the theme for almost every trader that I've talked to uh you know that is that hasn't really fully refined it or got an opportunity to really fast track their um making money process because of the way the market was a year and a half ago two years ago um, you know, they haven't had to actually go through some of the normal learning curve and now they're being forced to do it. So take the time. It's worth it because you will be infinitely more profitable if you learn how to do it properly than by trying to skip, you know, the process. It's just, this is how it works and everything. So, all right, Logan, man, great chatting with you. Uh, let's connect later again this week and we'll do another one where we kind of put this in, put the situational side of things into real life and in real trades of how to actually do it. So Sounds good to me. sweet. All I'll right. catch you later. Awesome. All right. Thanks everybody for watching and we will see you guys in the next video.